Akimitsu Akigami grew up hearing his womanizer father constantly point out that no one can live alone. But he is determined to prove otherwise. His father's intentions were questionable at best, and Akimitsu has no intention of following in his footsteps. However, when he unexpectedly meets a young woman who stirs impure thoughts within him, he makes a firm decision. He will become a Buddhist monk and forsake worldly desires. To his surprise, the temple he chooses for his devotion is populated entirely by women, including the very same young woman he encountered before. Now faced with this unexpected predicament, Akimitsu finds himself at a loss for what to do. In the opening scene, a young boy named Akimitsu is engrossed in playing with his toy truck on the grass, unaware of the challenges life brings. Suddenly, his father appears dressed in a sharp suit and radiating youthful energy and imparts a valuable life lesson. He tells Akimitsu that no one can thrive in isolation in this world. Intrigued, Akimitsu wonders where this idea came from. His father, belonging to the Akagami family, explains that understanding the power of unity is crucial and that having more people around you is beneficial. His father poses a question, doesn't having more friends make you happier? Akimitsu's face lights up with excitement as he wholeheartedly agrees. To further emphasize his point, his father adds that the same principle applies to romantic relationships, which amuses young Akimitsu, even though he doesn't fully comprehend it yet. Just then, a car arrives to pick up his father, who informs Akimitsu that he is leaving to live life on his own terms and meet many women, forming friendly connections with them, of course. With great enthusiasm, the little boy waves goodbye to his cool dad until the car vanishes into the distance. In the present time, a young girl with a braided hairstyle and a noticeable scarf wrapped around her neck strolls through a corridor and pauses beneath a suspended bell. Extending her arm, she reaches for the bell and rings it, presumably intending to alert people of the time and rouse them for their slumber. Her action awakens another girl who is deeply asleep wearing slightly revealing attire as her friend nudges her to wake up. Surprisingly, the place is filled with equally beautiful girls of the same age, all peacefully asleep, clad in crop tops and lingerie. As the sound of the bell resonates, each of them gradually begins to awaken. The true nature of the place, whether it's a convent or something else, remains undisclosed for now. Meanwhile, Akimitsu, now grown into an adult, is sound asleep with his head resting on his desk when he abruptly awakens with a start. He quickly regains his composure and scans his surroundings, discovering that he had dozed off while attempting to study. The realization hits him that he is running late for his class and must hurry to reach there as soon as possible. Boarding the train that takes him to his college, he remains immersed in his book throughout the entire journey, his face buried within its pages. Upon arriving in his classroom, he recalls the words his father once imparted to him, the importance of not living in solitude. Later, well into the afternoon, Akimitsu walks past the basketball court where the girls' team is engaged in practice, seemingly under the guidance of an inept coach. Near the nets, all the male students from the college stand transfixed, captivated by the curves accentuated by the girls' jerseys as they play the game. Akimitsu, engrossed in his book, appears completely detached from his surroundings, with his nose buried deep within the pages, seemingly oblivious to the spectacle. Some of his friends try to persuade him to take a break and watch the game, but he dismisses their invitation, asserting that he has work to attend to. Furthermore, when a friend extends an invitation to join him at a social gathering, Akimitsu adamantly refuses, stating that he has no place for women in his life. At the supermarket where Akimitsu works, his boss commends him for willingly taking up a shift on such short notice. Curious about Akimitsu's plans and potential desire to spend time with someone instead of working, the boss inquires only to receive a friendly refusal from Akimitsu, who mentions that he has been single throughout his entire life. However, before the boss can delve further into the topic, Akimitsu silences him with a single glance, sensing that his boss is about to share anecdotes about his own experiences with numerous female friends, given his familiarity with Akimitsu's father. Later, as Akimitsu walks home during the night, he reflects on a memory from when he was just five years old. At that time, he had admired his father, finding him cool for being involved with multiple women. However, the memory now vexes him as he despises his father in the present state. Growing up, Akimitsu came to realize that his father's behavior was nothing more than perversion, and due to sharing the same last name, he has had to endure a lifetime of embarrassment. This realization has led him to pursue a dignified single life with his sole ambition being to pass the civil service exam. Lost in his contemplations, Akimitsu is suddenly struck by a large bundle of rice, causing him to collide with a nearby wall. As he gets back on his feet, he finds a young girl standing before him, apologetic and holding two more bundles of rice. To his surprise, she is the same girl who rang the bell earlier. Concerned, she inquires about his well-being and offers assistance. As she speaks, Akimitsu finds her voice captivating. Realizing something unsettling, he quickly starts running while repeatedly insisting that this cannot be happening to him. 
Arriving at his apartment, he is visibly shaken by the encounter. In fact, he wakes up twice during the night, disturbed by dreams featuring the girl who nearly caused his demise. The following day at college, Akimitsu positions himself near the nets of the basketball court, observing the girls as they practice. His friends walk by and notice him peering through the net. Once again, they extend an invitation for him to join them at the mixer later, fully expecting him to turn it down. However, to their astonishment, he agrees to accompany them. Taken aback, they inquire about his lectures and work shift, expressing disbelief when he states that he will skip them. Skepticism fills the air as they exchange glances, remaining silent for a full minute. Akimitsu agrees to join his friends at the mixer, but it's not because he has undergone a change of heart. Rather, he has experienced love at first sight and seeks to distract himself from incessant thoughts about the girl he encountered. Despite having only glimpsed at her for a few minutes, he finds himself unable to stop thinking about her. As a result, his desires intensify by the minute, leading to his recent dismissal from work and the imminent failure of his classes. He begins to wonder if this is the curse of the Akigami family, adding to his growing sense of despair. Left with what seems like the only option remaining, he contemplates renouncing his current life and embarking on a path to become a monk. He submits a leave application to the head of his college, detailing his excuse. It takes the head a moment to process the unusual reasoning. Determined to embark on his new journey, Akimitsu arrives at the Mikazuki Temple, adorned with a comically designed stole. As he rings the temple bell, he is taken aback by the sight of a stunning girl dressed in revealing attire. To his dismay, he realizes that she is the very same girl he had encountered and fallen in love with. After going to such lengths to escape women, this was the last thing he desired. Observing his peculiar stole, the girl hurriedly goes to change, but upon her return, she stumbles and falls, causing her hips to jut out awkwardly. Frustrated, Akimitsu cannot help but express his exasperation by tugging at his hair in disbelief. The girl introduces herself as Aoba Yuzuki. Just as Akimitsu is about to leave, he accidentally collides with a sturdy rock, causing him to stumble and fall to the ground. Witnessing his predicament, the girl rushes over to assist them, her noticeable physical features catching his attention. Everything seems to be spiraling out of control, not aligning with his intended plan. Hastily regaining his footing, Akimetsu finds himself caught up in the moment, impulsively confessing his love to Aoba and proposing to her despite not fully comprehending his actions. Inside the temple, Akimitsu and Aoba sit together, sipping tea. Aoba clarifies that he was actually expected the following day as the head priest is currently absent. She then asks if she can pose a question, prompting Akimitsu to believe it might be some sort of admission test. However, to his surprise, she merely inquires about his well-being. Feeling perplexed, he punches himself into confusion and excuses himself to use the bathroom. While on his way, Akimitsu hears a faint voice emanating from a nearby well. Curiosity piqued, he hastens to investigate and discovers a small cat trapped inside. Driven by the desire to rescue the feline, he leans over the well, but ends up falling inside himself. Unbeknownst to him, Aoba makes a phone call to inform someone that the man who proposed to her unexpectedly arrived a day early. Meanwhile, Tsukio appears and expresses her intentions to spy on Aoba. Just as Aoba begins recounting the strange occurrence of an uninvited guy confessing his love to her at the temple, Akimitsu emerges from the well injured from his fall. Mistaking him for a ghost, Aoba and Tsukio begin to flee, with Akimitsu giving chase. During his pursuit, Akimitsu accidentally collides with various girls he encounters in the corridor. In an attempt to determine if Akimitsu is truly a ghost, Aoba and Tsukio step forward, contemplating whether to punch or kick him to test if he is a ghost. As Aoba delivers a punch to his jaw, she is taken aback by the unexpected outcome. Despite the situation, Akimitsu can't help but notice Aoba's adorable appearance. Later on, Akimitsu, Aoba, and another girl gather together to discuss the entire misunderstanding and fiasco. The girl clarifies that Aoba mistook Akimitsu for the monk she was supposed to meet a day later for a marriage proposal. She reveals that Akimitsu's uncle had directed him to the wrong temple, as the location had long been transformed into a nunnery. This realization sheds light on why the supposed temple had so many women and why each girl mistook Akimitsu for a pervert. The girl named Kiki proposes a solution to resolve the predicament. She suggests that Akimitsu can stay at the nunnery and undergo training for a while, potentially rectifying the confusion and allowing him to find his place within this unexpected turn of events. Upon hearing Kiki's suggestion, chaos erupts in the room, with all the girls becoming unruly. Tsukyo even accuses Kiki of being a pervert. To test this claim, Kiki mischievously reveals her breasts, further intensifying the frenzy among the ladies and causing Akimitsu to lose his composure. Frustrated and overwhelmed, Akimitsu decides that he must leave. After contemplating his decision, he bids farewell to everyone, realizing that Aoba likely doesn't remember their initial encounter, making his stay meaningless. At the bus stop, Akimitsu discovers that he has missed the last bus, leaving him stranded until morning. 
Unexpectedly, Aoba discreetly appears and offers him a place to spend the night with them, demonstrating that she has perceived his character differently. This gesture brings him a sense of joy, as it indicates that she doesn't view him negatively. Akimitsu introduces himself properly to Aoba, sharing his name, and the two exchange introductions once again. Aoba acknowledges that they have met only twice and apologizes for the earlier misunderstandings. Akimitsu experiences a moment of happiness upon realizing that she actually remembers their first encounter. However, a sudden turn of events occurs. Akimetsu's father had borrowed 20 million yen from the temple and needs to repay the debt. The women of the nunnery decide that Akimitsu will settle the debt with his body. Upon hearing this shocking proposition, Akimitsu's mind is sent into disarray. I mean, I'm sure they didn't mean it like that, right? Either way, my man has entered the most enticing challenge of his life. Will he be able to keep his sanity or lose it in carnal desires? Do let us know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, drop us a like and subscribe to Anime Soreo for more awesome animes like this recapped on your feed. With that said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace!